Hey guys, we're going to look at a co-dominance question. Uh, you'll know it's a co-dominance question if the heterozygotes show both traits. It's different from incomplete dominance. When we said something was incompletely dominant, you showed a blending of the traits, like red flowers mating with white flowers becoming or yielding pink flowers. Here, we would show if the same scenario was presented, but we were told that they would be co-dominant, then red flowers would mate with white flowers and would show red and white dots or wet red and white stripes. The best scenario, the most common scenario where we see codominance is in human blood typing. So let's take a quick look at this question which is on page 31. Page 31 in your workbook. The codominance uh, in the blood typing question that we're referring to here, we will let capital I A and capital I B be codominant, which means in a heterozygous in situation where we get an I A and an I B together in the same baby or the same adult, neither the, the A does not beat the B down to become type A, nor does type the B beat down the A so that this person would be type B. Instead, we would show both, and this individual would be type A, B. This is why we see both traits. It's not a blend. We don't see like an A and a half or something silly. It is literally just um, expressing both traits. Now the recessive little i will be present and either the a or the b can overpower the little i. Let's see how it happens here. A type a individual could be homozygous i a i a or it could be i a little i heterozygous. We could see type b being i B, I, B, or I, B, little i, another heterozygote. There's only one way to be type A, B, and of course you guessed it, I, A, I, B, and the only way you are type O is if you are missing either of the big ones, and you'll be little i, little i. Well, let's jump into the question then, knowing how the genotypes and phenotypes work. Let's read this together. A woman having type A blood, again, we stop and we think about what we've got as we read. Here's the man, there's the woman. A woman having type A blood. I know she's got type A, which I know, which means she's got at least an I, A. I don't know what the next letter is, at least not yet claims that her former husband who has type B, so the husband here has type B, there's an I, B. The reason I don't fill in that second letter is because he could still be type B if this is a big letter or if it was a little one. So because I'm unsure about which one it is, I'm just going to leave it blank and know that I have to fill that in somewhere. She claims that this, is the, this man is the father of her baby. The baby has blood type O. Well, these two have come together to produce a type O baby. Is it possible for this man and this woman to have this kid? Well, Clearly it is, but only if the man and the woman are heterozygous, meaning they both have a little I to donate. 
So we would see that in this case, it would be that I and this I that would come together to form this baby who has oops, blood type. Oh. The man denies that he is the father of the child and refuses to pay child support. Show how you would determine if the man is in fact the father. Well, there's no way that we can prove that this man is the father, but we do are we are able to prove that this man and this woman are able to have this child. Was it in fact this man? Well, we're not sure. We would have to perform, must perform a DNA test. A DNA fingerprint or gel electrophoresis to have that become uh, evidence strong enough to force this man into paying child support. 